Welcome back, my fellow duplicates. In today's episode here, I'm going to be building my very first storage tower. Now, this is based off of a couple different comments you guys have left me in the last video right here. Uh, and Michael was talking about the potential of having kind of an automated storage retrieval system. Unfortunately, we don't have a ton of automation just yet. About the only thing we have here is a smart splitter, which has one big drawback. And that big drawback is that it unfortunately will stop if the output is blocked. Even if you have, you know, any or none or whatever on any other side, if one of these gets backed up, this splitter stops running altogether. Uh, one of the other concepts you're seeing right here is the idea that your material can continuously flow in the loop. One, this looks cool, and that's important to my builds. It has to look cool. <laughs> Even if it's completely pointless, there's no point in moving this stuff around over and over again, except for to kill your graphics card, but it looks cool. Therefore, I like it. Uh, but the other thing here is that you can see we're moving iron plates, rods, and all this stuff with the idea that you could potentially come in here and just drop everything off. So here's the situation. If this was completely backed up and then that backed up, but that was my only input, nothing could ever continue to run through this loop. So that would be kind of an issue, but that's really not a bad thing. So when you go to line up a bunch of different products, the right idea is to never mix them in the first place. So you can kind of see what I've have set up up here right and this is a different a line of uh, many different products that are being made stacked and then distributed to their destination over here which in this case the destination is just for manually picking up what i need to handcraft on a station to do some research and whatnot however what i'd really like to have is this but have it only for the extra overflow that i have but have its main goal is to be feeding other machines so maybe I'm making quick wire, which you saw way over there, and I have extra rods and screws, which are coming from these plants. And then since I did the stator last time, there's a bunch of other products that are being made up over there. And those all kind of can get rebuilt and repurposed uh, into other products somewhere else. So as far as I can tell, one of the most straightforward ways to do that is to stack a bunch of conveyors on top of each other like this, and then you know, put a storage unit in line with all of that so that you get a nice big buffer right there in the middle. The thing is, uh, that just doesn't look cool enough to me. And it doesn't really allow me to tie in a smart splitter if I wanted to, let's say, dump my inventory into one spot here and have it flow out and then kind of be, you know, go to the correct destination. So what's my plan going to look like? Well, I think it's going to look something like this. Uh, this will be a tower that gets stacked up maybe even as high as 50. Because <laughs> um, I think there's about 50 different products that could be created and stored. There might even be more than that. So maybe there's going to be multiple towers. I don't know. We'll just have to see it. That, that could very well be taller than the space, than that thing away up there. I don't know. That, that might be just humongous. But let me explain at least what's going on here. So this meets my requirement of looking cool, but it also has some functionality. You can see this one is kind of big and then I refined it to make it a little bit smaller here and put some concrete in there to show you what's going on. So this side over here is where everything flows in and on the far side everything flows out and then the stuff on the side is just there to look cool. So uh, what we have here is I have a merger, a splitter, and then a merger. So if we bring in a conveyor on the right side it's only going to go to this right storage container. If you bring it in the middle it will be divided up between the two. And if it goes in the left, obviously it only goes to the left storage container. And on the front side, I kind of flip all of this around where I have a merger and then two splitters here. Again, the product here can only flow out on this side, the product here can only flow out there, and this one flows out with both. Um, so you can get a higher flow rate through the merger in the middle here. Um, and then again, the conveyors on the side here just look cool. <laughs> if anything, it would be better to not have that there, but maybe you want to split it out over here more times and, and feed more stuff, I don't know. In part, it looks cool. But it does have some functionality in that if we want to bring stuff into this, we have two good sides to really bring things in. If we wanted to deliver things via smart storage, you know, uh, and then kind of maintain a certain buffer for that smart storage over here, then we can bring it into just this side. 
And if we draw out from the middle unit right here, we're going to be pulling from both of these bins. So therefore we should be able to keep bringing that inventory down to a point where maybe we empty it because um, the priority is split 50-50. That's the concept. I don't know how well it's actually going to work out in practice, but I'm gonna build it and we'll see what happens. Okay, so I think my first tower is going to go right here, right next to this because I got two factories nearby. This one will probably be rebuilt into something else. I'm gonna build this 25 and we'll see how that how that goes. 25 layers tall. So, or maybe I'll start with 20. That's probably a better number. How about 10? Let's do 10. <laughs> okay, so this is pretty cool. Let's just go ahead and take a look at this. If I use this number here, you can see that it's now snapping to the equipment below it. So when I run a merger, all I have to do is line this up and then I could just use the grid lines. Oh, that makes it really easy. And then just do that. This will actually go pretty quick. Nice. All right, so here's an idea of how we could potentially do the smart storage thing. So if I put one here, and then maybe I let that go a little bit further, something like that, right? And we kind of do this number, where we have a bunch of these stacked on top of each other. We can use this to go up, right? But then we can also bring it straight across like that. And that's where we could put a smart splitter right there. So we could use that as a way to kind of bypass all those other little splitter thingamabobs that we had over there. If we just wanted to have a spot to dump like your manual inventory or something like that into this, you can kind of use that. Um, and then that could be fed to one side and then the factories just feed the other sides. And then it just keeps going up and up and up like that. All right, so let's take a look at this from a distance. See what I have going on there. Hmm, interesting. Looks pretty cool. Kind of has some sort of uh, kind of like Chinese building look to it. But they got the roofs that kind of tear out and everything. Although it isn't really tearing out, but it does look cool. And then from this side, this is where everything's going to go in. So this will be the feed side. So we, I should probably just focus on trying to figure out how I'm going to actually feed this thing. I don't think you guys want to watch me make another five of these or, or make it five times as tall, but let's go ahead and just uh, expand it. Let's see, uh, not expand it. Let's go ahead and feed it some product and see what happens. So this right here is the main sort of flow that I'm going to have, you know, all of these different conveyors stacked on top of each other. And then I gotta figure out kind of a cool way to, to make them go up there, to go into those, that, that sorting machine. Well, uh, storage machine, it's not really sorting. This one side will be storing. You know what I'm trying to say, right? We gotta figure out how to get this into there. Boom. All right, so we can, okay, so we can see what this looks like from a distance here. Some of the product isn't really all that visible. Some of it is more visible. But you can see the, it's moving around. So now I need to feed it. So I gotta build all the inlets over here. See, like this looks cool, but I don't want to make <laughs> 50 of these things. So I have to come up with something that's easier to build, but still looks cool like this. All right, so here's an idea. Let's try this real quick. If I do, what I got going on here is I have a, a, a way in and then it's going to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then you can head over here and go into the storage unit if I wanted it to. To make another line of this to get up to another higher level, what I would do is take this and build it over here. And then if I continue this stack, <laughs> this stack right here, all the way up, I should be able to use that as the jumping off point all the way up. 
That's my... That's one idea. That might actually work. Let's... Let's try to build a couple more and see what happens. Well, it's interesting, but I think it is not going to look like anything but a bunch of noodles and spaghettis and all that stuff over here. Especially when you figure out how many there's to go. It's just going to take over everything. Let's try a different method. I've got kind of a pegboard idea. Let's, let's try that out. So, what is the pegboard idea? It's where I don't have enough resources to build what I want. <laughs> but, what you should be able to do is go like this. When you have a... N Can I just not afford anything? Game. And that way it starts to travel up. Then if we really want to go somewhere, you can, you can kind of ramp up on it, but... You can use that to go back and forth, back and forth, and then you can stack many of those... ...all the way out. Oh, I think that's going to work. So now, if I wanted to take this... Is it on a level with anything? Well, it looks better if it's kind of lined up with that one, but... Hmm. So if we take this, and we know that the spacing between this is four. So you can see one, two, three, four. If we figure out how to drop that down four, turn it 90, drop it down four, turn it 90, drop it down four, and then we're going to end up right on top of the last one. But what we could do, maybe rather than wrapping it back around on itself, Drop it an odd number? Drop it by like nine? I don't know. There, there's some sort of cool pattern that we can do. I know it's there, I just don't know what the numbers are. So that we can make it look somewhat, somewhat like this. Hmm. Without looking horrible like this. Okay, so it was at this point that things became really quite difficult because what I was trying to do was to plan this but in my head without any sort of plan. Now this actually is not that hard to set up to get all these conveyors to go up like this. But the thing is you have to know what your spacing is and you have to plan for it so that the conveyors do not line up on top of one another. Uh, we ended up successfully getting it built within the stream, but I went back and I redid it after this just so that it, it lined up more correctly. It's not quite perfect uh, as far as its exit points down here, but as far as the conveyor stacking, it actually does work really good. So here's what's going on. This has eight different spots that it can exit, and then every time it drops down in between levels, we have three empty spaces. So the idea is for it to drop down six and then drop down five on this way. So six, five, six, five, six, five. So if I were to number this out, you know, this would be one, two, three, four, five. And then on the sixth one, that's where you do it right there. And the spacing one that I'd used right here is that six is the maximum drop that this can do as far as its maximum angle. So it is really easy to kind of set up uh, that Unfortunately, it didn't give me quite enough space down here, so maybe a little bit more length would be what I want to do. Now, hopefully we'll get some conveyor lifts here in the future and we'll be able to kind of simplify this a little bit. But as far as simplicity and something that looks good, this does work out as far as dropping six and then dropping five back. Uh, as far as, you know, having a ground level and then nine above it, it does, it does stack out pretty good. And it looks like there might be a chance for a little bit more here as well because there's still one gap right there. Now, I also continued to build out the rest of my base here a little bit as far as connecting different plants and whatnot so that they are moving on kind of a main bus line. Now, now that I've built this, I'm not, I'm not a real big fan of just how much conveyor there is floating around, moving around my base. What I really want to do here is to have different truck stations and, and maybe some conveyors that are nearby run into kind of a merging area and then go up over here. And then what I'll have beyond here uh, is probably going to be a couple more plants 
that might be right next to this or might be over here on the, on the corner. And that's going to draw in several different ingredients off of this side here and repurpose it into a higher tier item. At least that's the hopes. That's, that's kind of the goal here. But I would kind of like to reduce the amount of conveyor I have because this creates uh, two types of pollution. One, you're going to see it right here as far as performance when I go to activate all of this. Uh, it isn't necessarily a graphics card thing, it's just the way the game is. My GPU really is only reporting a utilization of about a maximum of 35% or so. Um, but, I don't know, we'll see. Watch what happens. This will look awesome too, by the way. Let's connect it and see what... So once we plug all of this in, all of the product that I have lined up, and all of the factories that are going to be, you know pumping out different parts. They're all going to start to activate here to fill up these bins. Let's do a lookout tower so we can get a nice high vantage point on this thing. And there it is. Look at all this product flowing in, going up, and into the storage unit. That's pretty cool. So did I achieve what I set out to do? Well, I think so. This over here went up really fast and it is well organized and I could probably use it uh, in several different ways. As far as how to get the product up there, this sort of strategy, now that I understand how to do it and how, how to lay it out as far as using a spreadsheet and kind of templating that, it is quite a bit easier to build. So I can build that quite rapidly. As far as how I'm going to feed in the product, I think I'm going to try to do something a little bit different than this, but this does work for right now. So yeah, as far as a plan and execution, it did eventually work out. I definitely hit kind of a roadblock here once I got to this point, but after, after a little bit of thought there and some good planning, I was able to get past it. So there you have it, guys. That's my vertical storage unit. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of Satisfactory. If you've got some great ideas for me, go ahead and leave them down there in the comments section below, and maybe I'll, I'll build them into a video at some point here. If you enjoyed this video, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button because I plan to do a whole lot more of this. Not only that, I do some live streaming over on Twitch, so that's a great place to follow me. As always, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar. out.